everyone, my name is Diane Nolan. I'm the Managing Director of Financial Services from Accenture. Um, and today I'm, to, I'm going to talk to you about five key themes uh, which are um, related to uh, the usage of AI and its adoption. My first theme is around data quality and the fact that it's not an excuse for low returns. Um, uh, what's behind that is the fact that today I'm doing a lot of engagements with clients who are focusing on um, uh, data uh, analytics and AI, and they have made uh, extraordinary progress and specifically also accelerated with COVID. Nonetheless, they're not getting the right results out of data. Why is that? It's because essentially the, the key foundations um, which are data governance, data culture, um, proper discovery mechanisms, um, and a, a clear data strategy and operating model in some cases are, are not at all in place. Um, and essentially, if you don't get this right, you will find yourself uh, not getting the kind of quality results and therefore the uh, accurate uh, return on investment required. My second theme is around um, creating a data flywheel for a company. What is your data flywheel? What does that mean? Today, um, a lot of companies are looking at um, and investing in AI in specific areas, a lot around um, KYC compliance, sanctions, uh, um, a lot of processing, back office, as well as um, front office, more sophisticated um, investments. But they are uh, very much, um, you know, actionable insights and um, outcome driven for that specific an area. The model that we see more and more and we would like organizations to move towards is what we call a flywheel for your company, where essentially the um, investments that you're making uh, are, are feeding themselves or being self-fed by um, customer insights, um, by you know, and, and through through the usage and the, the services that you're offering, that these are, you know, self-fulfilling, self-enriching and creating essentially better outcomes, both for the customer, for uh, the organization, um, and obviously ultimately um, better performing um, and, and self-learning and uh, better outcomes uh, for, for everyone. An, exa an example of this is in um, operations where you have to mix a combination of process intelligence, behavioral data and contextual data in order to actually get the right um, transformational outcomes that you need. Um, and this, this means, you know, examples are in case management, workflow, operations processes. Um, again, uh, something concrete they've been working on recently. Um, another key theme around modern platforms and engineering. So cloud is, uh, is massive. We've all experienced and, and seen that it's a huge enabler for uh, AI as well. Um, it enables and provides the capacity um, to uh, explore um, and uh, leverage data more effectively. Um, that said, um, you know, there's not enough speed and efficiency around deployment of cloud and AI is actually being used for that. So you can use um, uh, AI uh, to better assess the usage and capacity needs of, for cloud. Um, but you also have, uh, and, and some of the challenges that we see around uh, getting there, we believe, is a kind of a movement uh, for um, modern platforms and engineering, um, uh, AI ops, uh, DevSecOps, etc., leveraging AI and leveraging the, the, the learning around that. Another topic is sustainable alpha. So um, what does that mean? Um, today, a lot of organizations are creating their own uh, data sets, which is a, a, a you know a specific differentiator of value add, specifically in these times, COP26 is going on at the moment, um, and there's huge investments in this space, but um, uh, you know, the question we have uh, or asking ourselves is, uh, um, you know, is this sustainable, um, the actual action of, you know, collating and creating um, own ESG data? We see a lot of um, uh, pressure on in terms of speed to get uh, new uh, types of data um, and use a and AI is being used, sorry, to uh, actually get there. Um, an example of that is we're seeing more and more uh, types of uh, analysis like contextual um, uh, contextual AI uh, to read um, reports. We see uh, more va va video analytics um, com being combined with all of these other data sources to create um, new uh, ESG uh, sources at speed. But the question is also can, uh, you know, is this sustainable in itself um, as, a, as an activity is uh, that the complexity um, grows and the reality is, is there's there's certainly a market for ESG utilities. Um, you know, I think some of the uh, the, uh, the financial infrastructures out there um, have a great opportunity to offer um, ESG uh, data 
um, at scale for, for those who don't want to make those kind of investments. And then the last uh, topic is around uh, quantum. Uh, quantum is, um, we believe, a reality today. Um, it's both an unpredictable threat as well as a, an unimaginable opportunity. Why unimaginable? Because it's, uh, well, first of all, it's very hard to predict the real uh, or why as it's uh, not yet known. We're still in exploration phase. But, um, you know, we're, we see concrete uh, cases using, I'd say, more rudimentary uh, quantum or analog or quantum computing techniques, uh, for example, around uh, credit risk or others, um, which is happening already. Um, at the same time, and this is the unpredictable threat, is this, you know, um, there's uh, hackers out there and others who are um, very much using um, quantum to uh, to um, uh, hack and try to understand, uh, uh, and, you know, crack the cryptographic uh, key um, uh, challenge. So, um, you know, if uh, quantum accelerates, it could also pose a, a significant uh, opportunity in terms of cybersecurity for our organization. So what's key is to start the journey now. We believe and we know there's uh, data out there showing um, uh, a potential move from 260 million investment in quantum um, today to 9.1 billion by 2030. So you need to learn and um, you need to decide where and how to apply it in your business and uh, create, you know, already awareness around the uh, technologies needed and the talents needed to uh, to explore this in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.